It's the EVGA NVIDIA GTX 680, and this is the 4GB flavor, 4GB of GDDR5. One of our Australian members was nice enough to send this over, so thanks very much, Frank. He sent two of these, so we're going to test this thing in SLI. Uh, I'm also going to overclock the hell out of it and test it in single and double GPU configurations. First off, let's talk about the specs. We've got 1536 CUDA cores. Uh, the stock clock is 1019 megahertz. The boost clock goes up to 1084. This has a dynamic core clock. So you'll see the, the, the clock speed, depending on what game you're playing, go up to 1100 or 1200 megahertz, and you can overclock above and beyond that. If you came here for the overclocking and you want to know how to overclock, check out my GTX 680 overclocking tutorial using EVGA's Precision X software. For the memory, we have four gigabytes of GDDR5. The effective memory clock is 6008 megahertz. The memory bandwidth is 192.25 gigabytes per second. It's a PCI Express 3.0 card, but it will work just fine on uh, PCI Express 2.0 slots. Max resolution on this card is 2560 by 1600 through the digital ports, and through the uh, analog port it's 2048 by 1536. The max refresh rate is 240 hertz. Let's take a look at the physical card here. As you can see, we have nice, almost like a honeycomb design in the front. Really pretty. Now, they've done a few things uh, to differentiate this from the reference. It's almost identical to the reference. It's not like the classified. The classified has, like, you know, a crazy uh, power phase design. It's also just the modified PCB. Now, this card is almost identical to the uh, the stock card. The PCB is pretty much the same thing from NVIDIA, uh, except for that we've had, you know, the extra 2 gigabytes of GDDR5, making 4 in total. What they've done to improve this card over the stock is add the backplate. Now, the backplate will lower the temps a few degrees. So that really helps, especially when you're overclocking. Another thing that they've done to lower the temperatures on this thing, let's take a look at the fan here. Now the fan spins and blows air out the back. And you can see there on the back, the exhaust holes are huge. They're much bigger than, than like this. This is like a standard. This is a GTX 560 Ti, I believe. Um, so you can see the exhaust holes are much bigger. I was talking to one of the guys from EVGA, and he said that the bigger holes actually improve the temperatures by 4 or 5 degrees Celsius, and that's a really big deal. As far as SLI goes, this will work with four GPUs in SLI. That's right, quad SLI will work just fine on this, and you can see that there are two SLI connectors on the top. Let's get down to business with some benchmarks. Now, first off, I wanted to try Skyrim because I have all the HD texture mods, and uh, the HD texture mods do like extra RAM. So I wanted to try out the extra RAM that we have on this GPU with Skyrim. So running Skyrim here at 1600 by 1200, I've got Skyrim HD. Uh, those are the 2K textures, tons of other texture mods on everything from the clothing to the shields. Uh, the character models are all modded. So it's a very heavily modded version of Skyrim. Running this on Ultra, full scene anti-aliasing, everything as at max. With the stock clock, we got 88.32 frames per second. Remember, this is a dynamic uh, core clock, so when I actually played Skyrim, it ramped up to 1123 just on its own, which is really cool. So I overclocked it, I added 177 megahertz, which brought it up to 1300 megahertz overall, and I also bumped the uh, memory clock up by 500 megahertz. With that, I was able to get 95.6 frames per second in Skyrim. Next up, we played Metro 2033. I had 1920 by 1200, everything on max with a single GTX 680 at stock clock. I got 42.2 frames per second. I added that stable 177 megahertz overclock, and I got 49.9 frames per second. Two 680s in SLI, 67.4 frames per second at the stock clock with the 177 megahertz overclock, 75.2 frames per second. Now, NVIDIA Surround. This game really, really uh, punished both of the graphics cards. I'm running SLI here at 5760 by 1200, everything on max. Um, at the stock clock, 27.367 frames per second. With the 177 megahertz overclock on both cards, 31.033 frames per second. So just above the playable 30 frames per second mark with two GPUs, got it to work with Metro 2033. Crisis 2 running at 1600 by 1200 with one GPU at the stock clock, 61.4 frames per second. With the 177 megahertz overclock, 67.8 frames per second. SLI, 93.2 frames per second with two GPUs running at the stock clock. With the 177 megahertz overclock running on both GPUs, 97.6 frames per second. I want to mention that Crisis 2, uh, we're running the high-res texture pack and we're also running this at DirectX 11. We decided to play a little bit of NVIDIA Surround, so 5760 by 1200 DirectX 11, high-res textures, everything on max, ultra, whatever the highest setting is. With a single GTX 670, we had 25.4 frames per second. With the 177 megahertz overclock, 29.4 frames per second. Running an SLI at the stock clock with two GPUs, 36.833 frames per second. 
with the uh, 177 megahertz overclock, 44.733 frames per second. I love the dynamic core clock on this. It stayed nice and cool through just about all the testing. Also, the EVG Precision X software is a very, very easy software uh, to use. Go ahead and check out the video here on uh, how to use the EVGA Precision X to overclock the GTX 680. It'll also work on a lot of the other NVIDIA uh, graphics cards like the GTX 670 and the GTX 660. So definitely check that video out. Let me know what you guys think of this. Uh, I'm gonna be putting this up against the 7970 very soon. I've got one of those on the way. But this video should give you a good idea of how powerful this card is. Even with three monitors, it's, it, it's freaking ridiculous. So there you have it, the EVGA GTX 680 with four gigabytes of GDDR5. See you guys next time.